I'm Richard Brody, and I'm a film critic at The New Yorker. These are the movies that should have been nominated for Best Picture at this year's Oscars. 2022 was a terrific year for movies, but you wouldn't know it, judging from the 10 nominees for the Oscar for Best Picture. In the wake of the pandemic, movie viewership has not returned except for blockbusters. And to compensate, the membership of the Academy has nominated several blockbusters, several of the major commercial hits of the year, among the Best Picture nominees. Avatar The Way of Water is the club med of futuristic thrillers. James Cameron obviously relished the technical challenges of filming aquatically, but the problem is that his aesthetic of water seems borrowed from shopping mall gift shops of the 1980s. Unfortunately, for the most part, the other films that were nominated aren't among the year's best either. Consensus art house films such as Tar or Triangle of Sadness, Steven Spielberg's film of adolescent self-love, The Fablemans. Spielberg is at least telling a story he knows well. It's the story of his childhood and adolescence in his family and in the beginnings of his relationship with the movies. He tells this story with vigor, with verve, with passion, and at the same time, it's not so much a work of autobiography as of autohagiography. He's clearly very much in love with his younger self. I, mean, I kind of hate being negative about everything like this. I prefer dwelling, you know, on the, you know, the movies I liked. All right. Yeah, I think this, I think I have an idea. One of the reasons why my list of the 10 best films of the year is so drastically different from the Academy's list is that I didn't at all take into consideration the box office success or failure of any of these films. My feeling is that there's already an award for movies that um, sell a lot of tickets. It's called Money. The one real shock I had upon seeing the Oscar nominations is that one really great film that was also a big commercial success, namely Jordan Peele's Nope, was completely ignored. Nope is, of course, the story of a black family of horse farmers who provide horses to Hollywood, but they also have a long history with Hollywood and with movie making. It's also a story of exclusion and erasure. I can't help but feel that in repudiating, no, the Academy is also repudiating what the movie is telling Hollywood about itself. I think that the reason why critics and the Academy spurned Amsterdam is the wild disparity of its elements, its blend of comedy and drama. It's simultaneously a subtle, complex, and actually very moving love story, and an almost cartoonish political thriller, because ultimately it's a stark warning on the subject of what American fascists look like. Big pictures that should be very easy to recognize. The Cathedral is exactly the kind of ultra low budget independent film that the Oscars never pay attention to. It's directed by Ricky D'Ambrose, a New York based director who is telling on a very small scale, a very large scale story, the intellectual autobiography of an artist. It's very much a sharply discerning family story about the young filmmaker's parents' divorce, as well as about his burgeoning aesthetic sensibility. It's exactly the kind of movie that the Fablemans could and should have been. The Iranian director Jafar Panahi, who was arrested on political charges in 2010, has been living under terrible pressure since then, with a suspended prison sentence as well as a ban on filmmaking, public appearances, and international travel. He nonetheless has been making films clandestinely. In his new film, No Bears, clandestine filmmaking is the very subject and ultimately turns into a vortex of oppression that makes manifest, almost like a cinematic x-ray, the structure of religious and traditional and political repression to which he and the country are subject. The best films of 2022 look candidly at the filmmakers' own lives, at the places and times in which the filmmakers are living and working, and also confront the historical and political forces that are secretly at work all around them. By contrast, most of the movies nominated for Oscars this year, even when they address history, turn their back on it. For instance, Top Gun Maverick doesn't even dare name the enemy. But it doesn't really matter. I'm still gonna watch the Oscars and it's always a pleasure to watch the broadcast, whatever its quality may be and whatever the quality of the movies that get awards may be. Because ultimately, when it comes to the movies themselves, it's the long judgment of history that matters. 